We are talking today about VAE surveillance. Before we start uh, VAE surveillance, we have to uh, mention here the challenges for VAB uh, diagnosis and surveillance that led to the development of VAE surveillance. So this slide show that um, the VAB diagnosis is based largely on uh, non-specific criteria. We know that the, the VAB diagnosis or pneumonia for VAB surveillance is diagnosed through three things, schist X-ray, uh, microbiology, and clinical signs, clinical signs and symptoms, and microbiology. For the schist X-ray, we list on the right side the uh, the challenges or non-specificity of the criteria that is used for diagnosis of uh, uh, of VAB. Uh, so, for example, uh, schist X-ray in, uh, in in majority of the patients, uh, in uh, majority of the ventilated patients, if not all of them, are abnormal. So you you hardly see normal uh, schist X-ray to begin with. Lack of specificity for VAB. Uh, because the criteria for schist X-ray for VAB or pneumonia is similar to other diseases. Uh, additionally, there is inter-observer variability, uh, especially if it is read by, by more than one person, not with uh, the uh, purview of IB uh, or uh, ICB expertise. Uh, which means what? Which means um, it is not the role of uh, ICB uh, to read the X-ray, even if the X-ray uh, is uh, suggesting uh, pneumonic changes. Uh, for the clinical signs and symptoms, there is there are many signs and symptoms mentioned. Uh, that there is lack of sensitivity and specificity for each symptom. Uh, some are highly subjective, uh, like increase in productive cough or. Uh, 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 I mean, there is many symptoms that you can say it is there, it's not there, it is increasing, it's decreasing, and all are uh, on a subjective uh, background. Documentation of all symptoms varies. Some, some symptoms are documented uh, regularly, like cough, some others are not documented uh, as RALS, for example. Uh, microbiologic uh, evidence, lack of sensitivity and specificity again uh, for uh, certain uh, test uh, practices may vary, uh, especially when using different uh, uh, respiratory specimens. There is controversy about the best practices here, uh, about uh, detecting, uh, collecting specimens, using what type of specimen, and interpreting the, the results. So there are many challenges for VAB. That's why we need a new, um, uh, like more objective criteria for diagnosing uh, the side effects of ventilator. So uh, we, we uh, for, for that purpose, the VAB criteria is more or less subjective and non-specific. And uh, this is another example of the challenges for VAB that the rate uh, is uh, depending on the practices that is uh, the, the practices that are used by different hospitals and different surveillance bodies, you will get different uh, uh, VAB rate. And the, these are uh, several criteria described by the author that can be used to manipulate the VAB rate, uh, exposing to the public lower VAB rate than uh, reality. So one of these tricks that is strict interpretation of clinical signs and symptoms as well as just radiographic uh, criteria. If you say um, you have to have two ICBs, for example, uh, agree on the clinical criteria or just schist x-ray or whatever, or uh, saying that uh, x-ray has to be present on the same uh, institution to take, uh, to take it into consideration. Serial x-ray has to show dramatic changes. So you can manipulate the criteria, uh, uh, making it very difficult to meet. Seeking consensus between multiple ICBs, as we said, uh, you can 
uh, say that uh, events are not approved unless, for example, approved by two ICBs or approved by ICB and his or her coordinator, and so on. Allowing clinician to veto surveillance uh, determination if the uh, if, if the physician can say no, this is not VAB, and you take with this. Uh, take that determination again this is one of the criteria that you uh, delete VAB events and produce lower rate uh, requiring BAL for diagnosis so you don't take uh, uh, endotracheal aspirate and BAL usually and, and, and we know that when you go with lower um, specimen you get lower VAB rate setting quantitative growth threshold <coughs> for sorry for endotracheal aspirate and BAL Transfer patients who require prolonged mechanical uh, ventilation to another unit. So once the patient uh, is spent, for example, a week in this unit, they are transferred to another unit and the other unit is not under uh, surveillance, but you run it under surveillance. That's why we know that the more ventilated uh, duration, the more ventilation duration, the more level of uh, VAB we expect. So if you transfer the patient after a certain period of time from your unit, you are intentionally decreasing the VAB rate in your unit. Expanding surveillance to include uncomplicated post-operative patients who have ventilation for very short duration. And in, uh, in a sense, you can use various tricks to reduce the rate. Actually, this is not a uh, right rate. It is manipulated uh, rate that looks lower so the comparison become very difficult here and this very nice slide showing you that if you use the endotracheal aspirate you get the higher rate uh, ever uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and and there is two endotracheal aspirate one for any growth without using a certain specific uh, uh, cut points like uh, more than 1 million uh, per CFU, uh, CFU per mil, uh, and, uh, and if you use that, you get lower, uh, uh, slightly lower uh, VAB, and if you use uh, lower respiratory tract specimen, including uh, BAL, for example, you get a much lower VAB rate. So simply, if you want to go with low VAB rate, you specify that only VAB uh, diagnosed using BAL, for example, will be considered, other specimen will not be considered because it may be contaminated. So once you start to manipulate the way uh, or, or using non-standard way in diagnosis with other hospital, uh, comparison become, become uh, invalid. And this is very nice study also showing uh, the uh, inter-observer uh, disagreement or bias in detecting VAB. Uh, for example, you have here 50 ventilated patients and the number of patients diagnosed with VAB is different uh, from one uh, ICB to the other. For example, the first ICB agreed on 11 patients having VAB out of the 50. The second ICB agreed on 20 VAB out of 50. The third ICB agreed on 15 VAB out of 50 uh, ventilated patients. And even the VAB patients uh, that were, uh, were determined by different ICBs are not the same patients. So out of the 11, 20, and 15 patients agreed to be, uh, uh, to be VAB patients among the 50 ventilated patients, only seven, which is the overlapped by the three circles, these seven, uh, in the middle seven is the seven that the seven patients that that were uh, diagnosed as VAB patient by the three ICBs. Only seven out of this number of patients. Uh, and as you see, also uh, only three patients uh, are determined to be VAB by the first and second, and three by the second and the third. So basically, there, there is multiple uh, differences here between the way they diagnose VAB uh, by three ICBs. And this would give you how much uh, uh, heavy this inter-observer agreement in the VAB uh, surveillance.
One issue, one another issue is the complication of mechanical ventilation. So uh, in VAB uh, surveillance, we're looking for one major complication of ventilated uh, ventilation, which is the development of pneumonia, which we name it in this case, ventilator-associated ventilator pneumonia or VAB. Uh, however, this surveillance, the VAB surveillance, ignore other uh, other complication of mechanical ventilation, including sepsis, acute respiratory distress syndrome, pulmonary embolism, barotrauma, and pulmonary edema. These are uh, also important complication of mechanical ventilation that are not picked by using the VAB surveillance. So VAB surveillance is only picking uh, a, a portion. I, I wouldn't say small portion, but um, uh, incomplete uh, uh, representation of the complication of mechanical ventilation. Advantage of using VAA surveillance, which is replacing currently the VAP surveillance, is objectivity. We focus on objectivity, reliability. Objectivity means we, we don't have uh, uh, subjectivity. We don't have uh, somebody who say that this the symptoms is there and the other say symptoms are not there. Reliability means if uh, it is uh, reviewed by another person, they will reach the same conclusion. So reliability means you reach the same conclusion once and once again. An ability to automate when you have uh, clear standards that you can, for example, saying what does it mean uh, uh, worsening of oxygenation. You give me certain numbers. So uh, in this case, we can create a program to automate the process of surveillance. But when you have these tons of uh, signs and symptoms and uh, lab tests, it's very difficult to make it automated or to have uh, like uh, balance between different uh, different scenarios of calling uh, VAP. Uh, we identify a broad range of conditions and complications, not only the pneumonia. So, uh, yes, they target pneumonia, but other uh, ventilator complications that can produce uh, uh, um, worsening of oxygenation, uh, like uh, are the, uh, 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 acute respiratory distress, distress syndrome, atelectasis, pulmonary edema, which may be preventable. So. Uh, it increased the range of coverage from only pneumonia to multiple ventilator uh, complication. Enhanced the ability to use surveillance data to drive improvement in patient care and safety uh, as long as she, uh, the, the VAE uh, uh, has a broad coverage, it can enhance the ability uh, for improvement uh, and improvement project and measure improvement projects. Uh, this is slide saying that VAP and VAE surveillance are not the same, are, are not looking for the same uh, HII event. Uh, so VAP and VAE uh, uh, protocols detect two separate and distinct events. Uh, one is focused on VAP, which is ventilator associated pneumonia, and one is, uh, is focusing on ventilator associated conditions uh, or uh, events that is that are considered uh, side effect of VAE. So uh, on making both surveillance in the same population, you can have patient who have both VAB and VAE. You can have patient who do not have VAB or VAE, and you can have patient who have VAB but not VAE or do not have VAB but have VAE. So you have all combinations uh, available if you are doing both surveillance VAB and VAE on the same population. So let's go with the VAE protocol. We know that uh, we have NHSN uh, components and uh, one most important for us uh, for surveillance uh, is the patient safety component. And in the patient safety component, you have device associated, uh, procedure associated, or other modules. So you have three big groups of module. The biggest one is the device associated module, which include CLAPC, VAB, VAE, CAUTI, and dialysis events. And our focus today would be the VAE. So for the definition of VAE, uh, VAE 
is diagnosed using a combination of objective criteria. What are the objective criteria we're talking about? Deterioration and respiratory status after a period of stability or improvement on the ventilator, plus evidence of infection or inflammation, plus lab evidence of respiratory infection. And all this in a patient who have ventilator for more than two days and at the date of event, uh, the ventilator is, is still there or just uh, removed on the day of on the date of event or the day before so we have three levels of vae uh, these are vac ivac and possible vab and and remember that you cannot have ivac unless you have vac or you cannot have a possible vab unless you have ivac so the bigger circle the yellow circle is vac the orange circle is ivac and the uh, brown circle is possible VAP and uh, believe it or not this is the expected number of cases so you probably will see 10 cases of VAC uh, including four cases of IVAC including one or two uh, possible VAP so if we want a quick definition about uh, for each of the three levels uh, or tiers of VAE uh, VAC uh, after a period of stability or improvement in the ventilator for at least two days, uh, as determined by uh, FiO2 or PEEP value, the patient has worsening of oxygenation, which is defined as uh, at least two days of increasing uh, level of FiO2 by uh, at least 20%. Uh, or be by at least uh, three uh, centimeter of water. For in, uh, IVAC or infection related uh, ventilator associated complication, here you have two things together temperature increase or decrease, or white blood cell increase or decrease. So either temperature or white blood cell is enough, either increase or decrease of any is enough. Plus, a new antimicrobial agent start and is continued for four calendar days or four uh, qualified uh, antimicrobial days. Possible VAB is positive culture of respiratory specimen or other methods of identifying uh, pathogen. So uh, uh, again, each, each of the, uh, the, the IVAC, you have to have VAC first. Uh, possible VAB, you have to have IVAC first, so, so a, a continuous, uh, process uh, uh, like uh, levels. VA surveillance has a lot of changes. As you see, it was initiated in 2013 and uh, uh, they have modif make modification uh, after their almost on a yearly basis. So even in the, in the same year they, they uh, initiate uh, VAE, they said uh, remember that 0 to 5 centimeter on B are equal to 5. So this information was added later. <clears throat> and we will not go through the different uh, changes, but I'm, I'm just keeping this slide for you to know that the changes has been continuous in the VA surveillance until you see this version that we have in this lecture. 2014, they have four. 15, they have uh, four changes. 16, they have three changes. 17, they have one change. 18, they have several changes. 19, they have a couple of changes. And one of the changes that are continuous between different versions, uh, they, uh, the antimicrobial list, they, they update the antimicrobial list so they remove antimicrobial that are not used for the treatment of pneumonia because you know uh, the use of antimicrobial could be for a different reason if in, even if in, in ventilated patient not only for pneumonia the rate of vae in nhsn data that was released in 2014 um, the blue color represent uh, overall VAE, including VAC, IVAC, and possible uh, VAB, and the red color represent uh, IVAC plus possible VAB, which is infection related. Uh, and you can say uh, 
removing only the VAC. The VAC is just the worsening of oxygenation. Uh, but the only one that's considered infection is possible VAC. Uh, VAC and IVAC are, are still not considered infection. They said here infection related, they changed this uh, later uh, to make it clear that only possible VAB uh, is the infection, but IVAC and VAC are not infection. They, uh, they are, cannot be considered one of the infections. Uh, and VAC rates in INIC countries have been released recently, very recently actually, uh, and it is still higher than reported by NHSN. Uh, and there is great variability between different uh, uh, different units, but if we take the average, it's around 11.7, uh, and I guess the similar rate in NHSN is uh, around seven uh, per 1,000 central line, uh, sorry, ventilator days. This slide uh, is very interesting. It, it presents the data from uh, point prevalence survey done in uh, different hospitals in the US, European countries, and uh, in uh, uh, National Guard hospitals in, in, in Saudi Arabia. And you, what you can see from these uh, slides, that pneumonia, either the first or the second, and when it is the second, it's almost the same number as the first. Uh, so pneumonia by far in all uh, point prevalence survey is the most common infection in the hospital, HAI infection in the hospital. This is what we see in recent data. This is different from the data that has been released maybe 20 years ago and say the most common is CAUTI and pneumonia and uh, BSI are similarly around 11%. As you see here, we're talking about from 20 to 27 percent only uh, uh, pneumonia. So pneumonia is by far, in all recent data from all over the world, U.S., European countries, and in Saudi Arabia, it is the most common or second most common uh, HAI infection. And this slide is recently released. Also, it is the organism associated with the VAB or pneumonia in ventilated patients uh, and uh, mainly as you see in uh, ICUs it is staph, pseudomonas uh, and klebsiella uh, and in ward very similar uh, pseudomonas, uh, staph and uh, klebsiella. The surveillance methodology for VAE is active patient-based, prospective, priority-directed or targeted, and yield risk-adjusted rates. And if we go through them very quickly, we say active means we actively looking for VAE events, VAC, IVAC, and possible VAB, are not waiting for to for for us to be reported by other party in the ICUs or the ward. It's patient-based because we are not only depending on lab, we're collecting data about oxygenation status from uh, the ventilator reading from the patient, uh, uh, also uh, start of antimicrobials, uh, other lab uh, results. Uh, so it's a combination. That's why it's called patient-based because the opposite is lab-based. You only uh, care about the, dev the detection of organism and respiratory secretions. Uh, prospective means that we are doing VAE surveillance while the patient is in the hospital. And uh, again, we cannot do this backward uh, or retrospectively. Uh, priority directed or targeted, we are not doing VAE surveillance in every location in the hospital, but only location who serve ventilation services uh, and this is usually ICUs, uh, but if, the, if this is in the ward, fine also. Uh, and one thing that we have uh, to, to say here that we are not doing this, this usually continuously, but only in, uh, for certain duration during the year, maybe a quarter or two uh, uh, every year. Uh, and this is called priority directed based on the risk assessment that we do uh, in the year uh, before the start of the year of surveillance, the surveillance year. 
uh, yield risk adjusted rates we adjusted the, we adjusted the rate here with different adjustment methods including the vent uh, the number of ventilator days uh, the number of ventilator uh, um, uh, episodes the ventilator episodes uh, and we also create rate for different uh, ICUs and ward. So all this is stratification is a method of uh, adjusting the rate of VAE. Uh, and this also is taken in consideration when we calculate the SIR. Uh, we said that VAE can be done where ventilator, uh, ventilator services uh, are uh, surveyed. So it is done in patient. And here, this slide will tell you that we have now two versions of VAE. We have the general VAE, which is used for adult population, uh, but they don't add the word adult before it. Uh, so VAE stands for VAE for adult population. Uh, but uh, a new version, uh, which is the pediatric VAE, which may have uh, uh, considerable differences from uh, the regular VAE, and this is served only uh, or used only in patients uh, in pediatric and neonatal uh, locations. So it is by location. If the patient, the, if we have adult location like ICU or ward, then you use VAE. If you have pediatric or neonatal uh, uh, location, you use VAE. Sometimes you have mix of patients. Like for example, you have uh, adults, patients in pediatric population, you use pediatric VAE. If you have pediatric patients in adult location, you use uh, adult VAE or the regular VAE. So this slide uh, is summarizing where you can do the VAB or VAE surveillance. Uh, first of all, um, VA, VAE is replacing VAB. So now VAE is done in all locations. If you have adult location, do VAE. If you have pediatric or neonatal location, you do pediatric VAE. Uh, VAB is still valid for uh, doing in pediatric population, uh, sorry, pediatric location. So if you have pediatric ICU, you can still do v VAB and VAE. Uh, can I do VAB in other location? Uh, means Meaning in adult location and neonatal location? Yes, you can do but for internal use only because there is no uh, no uh, new, uh, available data for benchmark in the new uh, version uh, or new recent data for benchmark. Uh, so in summary, VAE is done all, all locations. If it is adult location VAE, a pediatric and neonatal pediatric VAE, and you can still do VAB in pediatric location and outside pediatric location is done only for internal use. Ventilator, this is one of the definition, although ventilator is very, uh, very basic information, but it, still this uh, has uh, undergone some, um, uh, some modification uh, to make it clear what does it mean ventilator for the purpose of VAE and VAB surveillance. It is any device used to support, assist, or control respiration inclusive of the weaning period through the application of, and this word is, is new, through the application of positive pressure to the airway when delivered via artificial airway and specifically oral nasal endotracheal tube or tracheostomy tube. So you need a device to support, help, or control respiration. And this device applies positive pressure uh, to the airway and is delivered through artificial airway. And artificial airway means endotracheal tube, either oral or nasal or tracheostomy tube. So several devices deal with ventilation are not considered ventilator because it does not meet this definition. Ventilation and lung expansion devices that deliver positive pressure to the airway via non-invasive means, for example, nasal uh, bronze, nasal mask, full mask, total mask, are not considered ventilator. Why? Because they are not using the artificial airway, as we said, into tracheal tube or tracheostomy. Yes, they control uh, ventilation, they exert positive pressure, but through non-invasive method. 
non-invasive method. So there is a whole group of ventilation called the non-invasive ventilation. They are not included in VAP surveillance or VAE surveillance. This is an example of ventilator used through uh, endotracheal tube, oral uh, endotracheal tube. Uh, artificial way which are considered ventilator, we said it's oral endotracheal tube or nasal endotracheal tube and we have photos here the tube is entered through the mouth or through the nose and in both ways they go to the trachea and tracheostomy they open opening in the neck in the front of the neck uh, to uh, uh, under the larynx to enter uh, the trachea and in this case it's called the tracheostomy if the patient has no tube in the, in the tracheal tube or tracheostomy is not ventilated uh, is not artificial ventilation or invasive ventilation that we are concerned in this uh, uh, in this uh, VAE uh, module. Example of non-invasive nasal mask, face mask, uh, helmet, uh, nasal cannula, a uh, brong, and so on. Uh, examples also of non-invasive means uh, which are not considered ventilator. Uh, uh, CBAB and BIBAB airflow and they are different the, the way they are doing this are different in means uh, the pressure exerted is different the way of applying pressure is different but both are non-invasive uh, ventilation and are not considered a ventilator uh, there are different uh, and complicated mechanical ventilation modes uh, and uh, uh, this include conventional uh, ventilation modes or adaptive ventilation modes and biphasic ventilation uh, modes just uh, uh, for your information if you need more details you can read the, the details of this slide and this slide tell you that the different ventilation modes are something uh, complicated and uh, they are electro electronically set uh, by the machine, uh, especially in recent versions uh, of ventilator. Uh, so this slide also, again, this is the second slide uh, for the people who are interested to know the different types of ventilator mode. Uh, why we mention the ventilator modes? Because some ventilator modes are uh, also not uh, considered, uh, not they are considered ventilator, but uh, usually are placed in a, in a, a separate category. So who are not eligible for VA surveillance? Patients who have been ventilated less than three days uh, are uh, not eligible uh, because, uh, because of the um, definition of VAC, as we will say now. So um, uh, patients uh, has to be on ventilator for more than two days. Patients in non-acute care setting, in, uh, in non-acute care locations, in non-acute care in acute care setting, which means they are in chronic care units, for example, are not eligible because VAE surveillance is done for acute care setting and acute care uh, locations. Uh, patient on high frequency ventilation, extra corporeal uh, life support ECMO and paracorporeal membrane oxygenation are not eligible for VAE surveillance during the time they are receiving those therapies, they are not eligible. But if they remove the th these therapies and use the regular ventilation, uh, then they are eligible. So eligible patients, uh, uh, in, in uh, non-eligible patients are listed in this slide. This slide describes the uh, population that are still eligible for VA surveillance because they receive conventional mode of mechanical ventilation in addition to brown uh, positioning, nitric oxide therapy, helium, oxygen mixture, and oboprostenol therapy. Uh, whatever uh, one, whatever uh, issue in these four categories, as long as they still receive conventional mode of mechanical ventilation, they are still eligible for VAE surveillance. Uh, again, still eligible for VAE surveillance, patients on airway pressure release ventilation. And again, this is a different mode of uh, ventilation. That's why we gave you these two slides 
for different modes of ventilation. Uh, it's a mode of mechanical ventilation characterized by continuous application of positive airway pressure with an intermittent pressure release phase. Uh, here, the only difference, they, yeah, so they are still eligible? Yes, they are still eligible. But however, VAC determination are made only uh, used uh, using uh, FiO2 because this patient uh, since the, the, the way the pressure is exerted, they cannot uh, calculate PEEP, uh, so PEEP is not used for determining uh, VAC. Uh, so uh, these are a group of patients who receive a special way, a special mode of ventilation that is still eligible, but when you determine VAC, you should use only FiO2, not PEEP. Uh, location of attribution as uh, different uh, device associated uh, HAI uh, surveillance. Uh, VAE is attributed to the inpatient location where the patient is uh, present during the date of event. Um, uh, we cannot uh, attribute the patient uh, to in outpatient locations where ventilator denominator is not are not collected like operating rooms. Uh, like ER, outpatient clinic, uh, these are not, cannot be, uh, can, uh, VAE cannot be attributed to this location because they are outpatient locations and all device associated uh, with the exception of dialysis events are inpatient locations only. Uh, exception of uh, transfer rule is the, uh, sorry, exception of attribution uh, of location uh, is the transfer rule. If VA develops on a day of transfer or the day after they are attributed to the first location or the transferring location, and if it develops on the third day after transfer, considering the transfer day as day one, it is attributed to the new location uh, or the current location. So this is an exercise about the transfer rule. So here a patient, uh, the first uh, row, the patient is transferred from ER to PICU in May 24 and May 25. He developed uh, the diagnosis or, or has been diagnosed with VAE or VAC. Um, and in, in, in this case, uh, this patient, uh, since it, it developed on the day after transfer, it's supposed to be uh, attributed to the first location. However, the first location is ER, which is an outpatient, so we cannot uh, attribute it to the ER, so it has to be attributed to the uh, current location, which is PICU. Uh, for the second patient, is transferred from the PICU to Ward 3, and uh, the day after transfer, they were diagnosed with VAE, and again, this should be attributed to the first location because it, uh, the diagnosis happened on the, the day of transfer or the day after. It is the day after. So uh, again, it, the first location was PICU. Uh, then it moved from PICU to Ward 3, then uh, on, on 24, Ward 25, Ward 3 and 25. And in Ward, 20, Ward 3 in May 26, they developed uh, VAE. And in this case, it should be attributed to the current location because it happened after the two days of transfer, considering the day of transfer as day one. So it is attributed to the current location, which is Ward 3. And uh, the last example, it moved from Ward 3 to home in 24. They get it in 25, VAE diagnosis. And as you see here, um, we cannot attribute it to home, of course, uh, even though uh, it was diagnosed on the day after transfer, so we have to attribute it to Ward 3. So these are the general principles of which AI definition, seven day infection window, day to pay event, present on admission, healthcare associated infection, 14 day RIT device removal and reinsertion, secondary BSI attribution period, and pathogen assignment guidance. These are not applicable in, in VAE surveillance. Uh, they included only a few of them with uh, specific changes. So these are the specific principles of VAE definition or modification. Some of them are modified completely and some of them the same, uh, especially device removal and reinsertion, for example. 
uh, so uh, uh, these are the specific principles of VA definition including infection window date of event repeated time repeat, repeated infection time frame device removal reinsertion and secondary BSI attribution period you will see the differences between uh, the current version in VAE and the previous version that we learn in CLEPC, VAB, uh, CAUTI. For the infection window, instead of the seven days that we know about, uh, that what we used to know about uh, device associated, especially uh, uh, CLEPC, VAB, CAUTI, we have here uh, five days. Uh, and these five days, maximum five days, let's say that maximum five days, and it include the first day of worsening of oxygenation after two days of at least two days of stability or improvement uh, and this would be the date of event two days before and two days after uh, would be the infection window five days at maximum so here we have two examples of the infection window uh, you have two days of uh, stability or improvement day 11 and 12 uh, on the other uh, box and uh, then worsening day 13 and 14 of mechanical ventilation uh, and the first day of worsening which is 13 of mechanical ventilation this would be the date of event two days before and two days after this would be the window that you have to have all the criteria for uh, IVAC and possible VAB uh, uh, met uh, during that uh, window so this is an example of five day uh, however if this happened early in the ventilation uh, so instead of uh, the, uh, for two days of stability on day 11 and 12 as the upper box it is, it is in the th second and third day on ventilator uh, and two days of worsening the first day of worsening the date of event two days before and two days after however we cannot include in the window any day of the first two days of ventilator uh, of ventilation as we said the window has to be after two days of ventilation so any days that will be included in, uh, in the window from the first two days will not be included in the window so this window will become four days now which is the third fourth fifth and sixth day uh, of ventilation we cannot include the, the second day of ventilation uh, in, the, in the window the date of event is the date as we said the date of onset of worsening of oxygenation and it's defined as the first calendar day of the required uh, at least two days or more uh, two days or more of worsening of oxygenation following two days or more uh, of a, a period of stability or improvement in the ventilator repeated infection time frame it's an UVAE cannot uh, it's the period where an UVAE cannot be uh, diagnosed during a 14 day period um, so it is 14 days similar to the RIT for other HAI but the two days of stability uh, can be within the repeated time frame so the the two days of stability of, of the next uh, um, event VA event can be included in the last part of the 14 days secondary BSI after VAE uh, are not after VAC or IVAC because we said VAC and IVAC are not infection uh, possible VAB is infection so secondary BSI can be uh, reported after possible VAB uh, when at least one eligible organism from the blood culture specimen matches uh, eligible organism from appropriate respiratory specimen so, so you have uh, to have uh, uh, organism from the respiratory specimen and organism from the blood and both are matching the respiratory specimen has to be collected during the window the five day window sometimes three to five day window uh, the positive blood culture has to be collected during the 14 day uh, repeated infection time frame as we said before so the uh, secondary BS, BSI after VAE included in the first scenario where you have the respiratory specimen during the window and, B, uh, and positive blood culture during the BSI attribution period. Uh, but the second scenario we cannot use. 
Um, secondary BSI cannot be reported uh, after possible VAB that uh, was diagnosed based uh, on histopathology because there is no respiratory culture uh, with organism that was uh, identified. Also, if the uh, diagnostic criteria used for possible VAB was viral, including respiratory syncytial virus, influenza, adenovirus, para, influenza, and so on. Uh, in this case, we cannot report secondary BSI after viral infection. Why is the VAE date important? Uh, for, first, it defines the VAE period uh, uh, or window, sorry, VAE window period. Uh, it demarcates the middle of the window, two days before and two days after, but remember that the first two days cannot be in the first two days of ventilation. Uh, sets a 14-day VAE event period, which is uh, the uh, repeated infection time frame during this period you cannot uh, diagnose a new uh, VAE you cannot upgrade the VAE uh, using data collected during the 14 days but outside the window um, uh, and you um, uh, need to have the positive plug culture collecting during these 14 days that's why it set the, the dates for uh, several events uh, during the VAE uh, surveillance. A new concept is added in VAE surveillance called episode of mechanical ventilation. Here, the period of days during which the patient was mechanically ventilated for some, por so for some portion of each consecutive day. So the, it's a consecutive period, consecutive day period where the patient is ventilated. It's not separated by full calendar day without ventilation. Even if the ventilator is removed, uh, wind removed and re, uh, re-intubated again uh, on the same day or the next day, still the episode of mechanical ventilation counts. But if there is uh, one full calendar day uh, separated between the extubation and intubation, then a new episode of ventilator mechanical ventilation uh, occurs and the same patient con can have uh, all patients on ventilator have at least one episode of mechanical ventilation but more than one episode in some patient when they uh, uh, extubate and reintubate with full calendar day without re uh, without intubation So here uh, you continue the same episode because they extubated uh, on uh, the day the the uh, extubated then intubated in the next day. But in this example, there is full calendar day without mechanical ventilation. So these separate two uh, episodes of mechanical ventilation. And the importance of this, uh, as you see, we need to count two days of stability or improvement of oxygenation and two days of worsening of oxygenation. You cannot uh, uh, count this uh, across two mechanical uh, ventilation episodes. You have to be in the same episode uh, to count these two days and two days. Um, in this example, as you see, there is two days of stability or improvement and two days of worsening, and the patient was extubated uh, on the second day from, uh, of stability and intubated in the first day of worsening. Again, if there is no full calendar day, you can continue uh, counting ventilator days in the same episode, and you can um, calculate the two days and two days uh, required for meeting the VAC criteria, but if there is a full calendar day, you have to recount again two days of stability and two days uh, of worsening. This is slide differentiate VAE from other device-associated HAI, and by device-associated HAI, we mean CLAPSI, VAB, CAUTI, and dialysis event. Uh, the window in device-associated is seven days, but in VAE, it's five days and sometimes shorter four or three days if the first two days uh, appear in uh, the first two days of ventilation. Uh, diagnostic test uh, it depends on the 
uh, the the device associated. So it's a post plug culture in Clapsy X-ray in VAB and urine culture in uh, uh, in Cauti. Uh, but VAE, uh, there is no diagnostic test. It's only oxygenation status, worsening after stability. Date of event is the first element to meet the criteria in device associated, but it's the first day of worsening of oxygenation in VAE. Repeat time infection, uh, repeated infection, repeat infection time frame is 14 days after VAE, after CLAPSI, CAUTI, and VAB and 21 days roll uh, after dialysis event to count another another dialysis event. Uh, and in the VA, it's 14 days uh, before you can diagnose another one. And remember that the stability of the next one can be present within the 14 days, uh, but the, uh, the date of event cannot be within the 14 days. And remember the date of event is the worsening, the first day of worsening of oxygenation. Device removal and reinsertion recount after at least one day of device. Uh, here, uh, recount, uh, it is similar, but this would differentiate, the difference is this would differentiate the uh, two ventilator episodes and you cannot uh, split the counting of two days stability and two days worsening between two episodes. It had to be in the same episode of ventilation. Uh, secondary BSI attribution is 14 to 17 days after UTI and uh, VAB, but there is no secondary BSI after primary CLAPSI. Uh, and uh, VAE is 14 days, uh, in VAE it's 14 days following a possible VAB, but there is no uh, secondary BSI after VAC or IVAC because they are not considered infection. So explaining the oxygenation issue, uh, oxygen requirement, we have two parameters to use for oxygen requirement, the fraction of inspired oxygen or FiO2 and positive index respiratory pressure or PEEP. And for the FiO2, it's simply the pressure of oxygen, of oxygen. and in the normal air, it is 21%. Uh, in the ventilated air, it's uh, much higher than the room uh, oxygen, which uh, uh, usually set at 50% uh, or something like that. But very rarely it become 100% because uh, it can make uh, oxygen toxicity. Uh, positive index respiratory pressure, it's a, a, a certain pressure uh, that should be applied uh, in the lung above uh, 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 the atmospheric pressure. And we will consider atmospheric pressure as zero. Of course, this is relative zero because uh, atmospheric pressure uh, has, a, 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 has a number, but we will consider anything with the atmospheric pressure as zero. We will increase above this zero, a relative zero of atmospheric pressure uh, uh, up to five centimeter HE, H2O pressure uh, to force the uh, ventilation uh, and the, uh, the ventilation of the lung. So we'll consider the patient oxygenation worsen and because of hypoxia, if FiO2 increased by 20% or PEEP increased by three centimeter water above the regular zero to five, which is all equal to five. Daily minimum FiO2, uh, here we, we want to say that the FiO2 uh, recording on the ventilator is uh, changing all over the day. So it's not a constant measurement. So what we want to report for the whole day is one measurement, which is the lowest measurement that is maintained for one hour. And if there is no, in case if there is no, uh, uh, no, mo no value that has been maintained for at least one hour, uh, so, um, uh, we select the absolute lower, uh, lowest value available regardless of the period of time uh, in which the setting was uh, maintained. Uh, and if the uh, recording of the FI2 is, uh, is repeated every uh, 15 minutes or 30 minutes, you make sure that we have more than one hour reading. So in case of 15 minutes, you need five reading. And in case of 30 minutes, you need uh, three reading to make sure you have more than one hour 
uh, of reading of FiO2. Similar to FiO2, the PEEP uh, also we record only the lowest PEEP reading that has been maintained for at least one hour if there is no value that is maintained to uh, more than one hour. So you, uh, uh, you use the absolute low lowest value. And if the reading is more frequent, you want to make sure also it is recorded for more than one hour. So these are exercises to detect the daily minimum PEEP and FiO2. And here you have the reading for PEEP and FiO2. Uh, and you, you first look at uh, how frequent the reading uh, on the ventilator. So here we have 6 uh, BM, 7 BM, 8 BM, and so on. So it's every one hour. So we need a reading that is repeated twice, consecutive reading, uh, similar reading. So the consecutive similar lowest reading is 5 in BEEP and 0.5 in FiO2. And these are the daily minimum BEEP and FiO2 should be reported uh, uh, for the purpose of um, of what of the uh, VAE uh, protocol. Uh, another example you have here six seven eight uh, BM, so it's in every hour, but we do not have one value. Uh, the, the five uh, the five uh, beep at uh, eight PM is not. Uh, is not maintained for one hour. So uh, we should take um, the, the next lowest value that has been maintained for one hour, which is here, eight. The same thing is in FiO2. Uh, so if, if there is no value, if the lowest, absolute lowest value is not maintained for one, for one hour, you go to the next lowest. If there is no value, whatsoever maintained for one for one hour then you go with the absolute lowest value and in this example the the reading is 12 a.m 4 a.m uh, 8 a.m so it's every four hours uh, here uh, whatever reading you take it is maintained for one hour um, theoretically because it is the reading is more than one hour apart so we will take the lowest one, absolute lowest one here. It's five, uh, the first five, and the first point four uh, for FiO2. So what we mean by worsening of, uh, of beep, as you see here, zero to five beep is equal to five all the time. Uh, so increasing for three centimeter above the five, Will be which is eight, uh, by the way, uh, uh, will be considered worsening of B. So here, if we look at the B, you have zero, zero, three, five, and all these are as if you record five. So we have four days of five. We need only two days of five. Three and five is, is uh, which is the third and fourth day. So we meet here the uh, stability uh, of the B. Now, on the fifth and sixth day on the ventilator, we have eight, so this is a three centimeter uh, higher than the baseline, so the VAC is met, and the date of VAC would be the first day of worsening, which is the day five on, uh, on uh, ventilator. Uh, look at this example regarding the FiO2. Uh, you have 150, 40, 40. So you have two days of 40, which is considered uh, uh, stability. Then you have 70. You need only more than 20% 20, uh, 20 or more. So here, here you have 30%. So this is worsening of FiO2. And the first day of worsening is day five on ventilator, which is the day of the date of event of the VAC. Uh, here, uh, if you see the previous example, but only the only change instead on the third day on ventilator uh, 40, it becomes 35. So here 35, 40, there is some slight increase. And what we're looking for in the baseline is either stability or improvement. Improvement means decrease of the number. 
but here increase of the number means slight worsening so the 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 basic requirement for stability is not there so although there is 40 30 percent higher uh, or increase on the fifth day that is maintained for two days uh, this is not meeting the the uh, VAA uh, VAC criteria uh, because uh, there is no stability here there is minor worsening so this is uh, giving you the summary of the time frame for VAE patient must be mechanically ventilated for more than two days to be eligible to uh, for VAE surveillance and the earliest day on which VAE criteria can be met is day four because you need two days of stability and two days of worsening so you need four days on the ventilator before you can decide this is VAE or not and the earliest date of event is day three and again this cannot be diagnosed except retrospectively you should have two days of worsening and the first day of these two days would be the date of event so the date of event is always diagnosed retrospectively for VA definition uh, we as we said you have a patient on ventilator for more than two days and you have baseline uh, period uh, for at least two days of stability or improvement means the number of FiO2 and B or B are either stable or decreasing followed by sustained period of worsening of oxygenation which means that the FiO2 and B are increasing uh, so in this case you diagnose VAC if you have signs of inflammation uh, so the, the first part is oxygenation only and is diagnosed by FI2 or BEEP and if you have at, in addition to the previous oxygenation issue you have uh, signs of inflammation which is a temperature or white blood cell as one component and a new antimicrobial start as another component you have now IVAC infection related ventilator associated complication and if in addition you have positive microbiology and additional evidence of uh, uh, from the lab uh, you have now possible VAB uh, which is come the last uh, level of uh, VAE definition algorithm I gave you this before, but just to, to remind you that the number of VAC is much bigger than the number of IVAC, and the number of IVAC is much bigger than possible VAP. So for the VA definition VAC, we will take the layers one by one. So here you have uh, a person uh, on ventilator for more than two days, and uh, he has at least two days of stability or improvement, then two days of worsening. Uh, of FiO2 or BEEP and remember that FiO2 uh, uh, worsening means uh, at least increase of FiO2 by 20% and uh, the worsening of PEEP is at least uh, 3 centimeter above the baseline which is considered 5. Uh, looking at these slides it will show you uh, stability and increase uh, so uh, these are FiO2 meeting VAC criteria uh, if you look at the first two days in the four uh, four graphs uh, it is stable or decreasing so 50 50 50 or 60 50 so decreasing uh, means improving uh, for the two days uh, for the increase it has to be more than 20 and as you see here 50 become to 80 50 become 80 50 become 70 50 become 80 and all at least 20 so you have 20 or more increasing of FiO2 uh, and it is maintained maintained means uh, either they are 80 all the time or increasing or decreasing but the lowest value of the two days is 20 20 or more higher than the stable baseline so you have always at least 20 uh, uh, 20 points or 20 percent increase in FiO2 that is maintained sometimes you have higher uh, increasing or decreasing uh, FiO2 but the baseline is 20 points or more above the uh, above the stable first two days 
Here, if IO2 not meeting VAC, uh, why it's not meeting VAC? Because in the first one, on the first left, upper left, um, it, the, the baseline is not meeting. Uh, it's increasing. 50 becomes 60. Uh, decreasing is fine, increasing not fine. Stable is fine, so this is for the blue uh, stable baseline. So the first on the upper left uh, is not meeting because of the baseline. For the other three, it is meeting based on the baseline. Look, let's look at the increase. So the increase in the second and the top right one um it is decreasing and when it decreased the second day is 60 which is only 10 points above the baseline uh similar thing is uh, in the lower left uh, similar thing in uh, right uh, lower right uh, uh, so you have to have a stable 20 or more percent increase of FI2. So this, all those examples are example of uh, not meeting the 20. The only one that meeting the 20 here is the top left one, but the baseline is not meeting because it's increasing, so uh, cannot meet the FI02 FVAC. Uh, similar thing for, uh, for uh, PEEP, and as you see here, we have to have three uh, above uh, the five, so you have to have eight. So the only acceptable, the, the lowest acceptable increase is eight. Uh, and any number before in the baseline period between zero and five would be considered uh, five. So here, uh, all of them have at least three centimeter met, met uh, although sometimes the two uh, days of worsening have either stable numbers like eight or decreasing number nine become eight or increasing number eight become nine. But on all of them, the minimum uh, increase is three centimeters above five. These are for example of not meeting the PEEP uh, uh, criteria for uh, VAC. Uh, the reason for that is uh, because uh, the three centimeter are not maintained uh, for in, in, in the first uh, in the top left one it's only one centimeter that was maintained and the other three two centimeters were maintained although one day has three centimeters but we have to have the two days in uh, the lower uh, two. Uh, either having increasing or decreasing uh, values, but uh, the baseline there was no three centimeter maintained during the two days. So they are, these are not meeting the PEEP criteria for VAC. Uh, this slide is interesting. Uh, as long as one FIO2 or PEEP is meeting VAC, uh, VAC determination uh, is met. Uh, so uh, we we making a trick for you here in this case. Uh, uh, for, for example, sometimes if I two most of the time if I two or be increase together or decrease together, but sometimes as in the lower part of the of this slide, uh, the if I two is increasing and the beep is decreasing over the days. Again, once met met by one of them, you don't have to meet. The criteria for FIO2 and BEEP, either one is enough. So for this real, real example, you have two days of stability, day three and four in ventilator, uh, as evidenced by both uh, FIO2 and uh, uh, BEEP, and, uh, uh, and then you have two days of worsening uh, only by FIO2, so FIO2 meeting the definition of VAC and the first day forcing would become VAC. An example two, you have uh, two days of stability because you may say it's not five, it's not three, it is three and five. As I said, any number be between uh, zero and five, zero, one, two, three, four, five, would be considered five. So three and five is meeting. Fifty and fifty for 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 FIO two is meeting also. 
Uh, now for the two days of worsening, we have the PEEP increased by three centimeters and maintained, but we do not have the FiO2 increased. So uh, uh, it is meeting through the PEEP and that's enough to call for VAC and the first day of worsening would become the date of event. Here, uh, as we said uh, before, the FiO2 uh, was increasing during the baseline, so it's not meeting the criteria of uh, uh, stable or, or improved uh, uh, baseline, so this is not meeting the VAC criteria. For VAE definition IVAC, the second layer. So here you have uh, uh, two things. Uh, the first one, you have uh, uh, signs of inflammation, either temperature high or low, or white blood cell, by white blood cell high or low. Uh, when we say high temperature is above 38, low temperature below 36, high white blood cell above 12 uh, or uh, equal or above uh, 12,000 and uh, low uh, equal or below uh, 4,000. So one of them is enough to meet the criteria. Then the second condition, you have to have a new antimicrobial start that is continued for four qualified antimicrobial days. And when we say qualified antimicrobial days, it is day in which the patient was administered an antimicrobial agent that was determined to be new during the window. So it has to be new during the window. And we will have example for that. When we say abnormal temperature or white uh, blood cell, uh, it's, it should be searched only after the vac is met. So you don't look for the signs of IVAC unless VAC is met. And these signs, it has to be in the window. Abnormal temperature or white blood cell count documented during the VA when the period should be used in determining the whether the patient may meet IVAC definition regardless of whether an abnormal temperature or white blood cell count was also present when admission or outside the VAE window. We have to look for this at the window. And again, the window become three to five days based on uh, the time of ventilation. So it is, if, if it is in the first two days, it becomes shorter than five days. It is, if, if it is in the uh, outside the two ventilation days, it becomes solid five days. The first day, the first day of worsening become the date of event two days before and two days after. And you have to look for the temperature here, the antimicrobial start here, and the uh, document for respiratory for lab evidence of pneumonia here also. When we say new antimicrobial start, any agent limited on or after the third calendar day of mechanical ventilation. Again, it has to be in the window and we said that the first two days of ventilation is not part of the window. And within the window, you have to have agent that is considered started or new and it has been maintained for at least four days and new agent must be administered intravenous intramuscular or via, or via digestive system uh, or respiratory tract. There is no requirement that the same antimicrobial agent is given on the four qualifying antimicrobial days. So it may be one agent or multiple agent. The continuation of the agent after the window is taken in consideration, but it has to be started within the window. Started uh, uh, when we say started within the window, uh, uh, this means that it wasn't given in the first two days before the window, the, 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 the two days before the window. So the requirement for the four consecutive qualified antimicrobial days can be met within with four days of therapy with the same antimicrobial agent, even if there is a gap of no more than one calendar day in between or four days of therapy with multiple, not single antimicrobial agent, as long as each antimicrobial was started within the window. It may be continued after the window, but it started within the window. If the patient expired prior to the fourth day of administration of qualified 
uh, antimicrobial days, the parameter of IVAC is not met. No need to look for the reason for administration of antimicrobial. Was it because of prophylaxis, descalation, switch to another agent? Uh, we don't care about the reason why the antimicrobial use. Uh, they have been updating the list of antimicrobial use to make sure this antimicrobial represent um, antimicrobial that are used in, for treating pneumonia. Included antimicrobial agents, antibacterials, antifungals, and limited antiviral. Excluded antimicrobial, which are excluded from the list in different uh, uh, updates, anti-HIV, anti-TB, agents used to treat viral hepatitis, anti-parasites, agents used to treat herpes, uh, agents unlikely to be used in treating a lower respiratory tract infection in a critically ill patients. Uh, these are the list of antimicrobial allowed to be uh, uh, eligible to be uh, to give you four qualified antimicrobial days that is started in the window and may be continued outside uh, the window. Uh, we will not go through them, but just uh, for your reference, these are the list of antimicrobial agents eligible for VAE uh, surveillance uh, for IVAC. This is the list of antimicrobial uh, list for VAE surveillance and here on the blue box you will see the antimicrobial that are unlikely to be used uh, for uh, treating lower respiratory infection in critically ill patients like oral cephalosporins or penicillins, erythromycin, cofalo, uh, colarum phenicolin, and, and many other drugs that are not usually used for acute care uh, setting in critically ill patients for treating lower respiratory tract infection. So these are examples of new antimicrobial start. When you see this shaded area, this is the window. And as you see here, cephalospore ceftriaxone was used before the window. So we cannot consider the use of ceftriaxone here uh, in the first example as a new start. It's not new start. The, 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 the one that's considered new start is meropenem, and it is the same antimicrobial have been used for four days, three in the window and one outside the window. So these meet the four qualified uh, antimicrobial days. In the second example, you have ceftriaxone, uh, meropenem, uh, bebracil, and tazobactam, uh, so we can consider merobenem, bebracil, and tazobactam as new start because both started during the window. We cannot consider ceftriaxone as new start because it was used in the two days before the window. So here the four uh, qualified antimicrobial days were met using two antimicrobial merobenem for two days and bebracil and tazobactam for another two days. Uh, both of them were started during the window. One of them were, was continued after the window. In the upper example, you have here levofloxacin uh, started within the window and uh, one day off uh, uh, used again, one day off used again. So these are actually five uh, uh, qualified uh, antimicrobial days. You may say, but it's only three doses or three uses. Uh, we, can, we, we tell you that if there is one uh, day gap during the use of one single antimicrobial, it is allowed because these uh, calculated based on the kidney function uh, and uh, the excretion of the, uh, the the antimicrobial. In the lower example, they have vancomycin for uh, started during the window, so it is uh, it's a new start. Then two days without vancomycin and then uh, vancomycin. So although vancomycin was started within the window and, and we cannot consider this as more than two days of use because the, the, the gap here is more than one day. We allow gap of one day before different uses, but not two days. If it's two days, then there is no continuity here and only use two days, which is not sufficient to meet the criteria for IVAC, which is at least four, uh, consecutive, four, cons uh, four qualified antimicrobial days. Uh, for the last year, possible VAB, possible VAB or the last year requirement, you have to have first VAC and IVAC met. You cannot look for the lab criteria unless you meet meeting VAC and IVAC. 
uh, lab test collection dates must occur on or after calendar day three because again it has to happen in the window and we cannot include in the window the first two days of ventilation organism exclusion must be considered normal respiratory flora mixed flora mixed respiratory flora oral flora or equivalent are not eligible for the diagnosis of VAB. Candida species or yeast are not otherwise specified coagulase negative staph aureus and enterococci unless isolated from the lung tissue or pleura are not eligible organism and this uh, in, in, in VAB uh, surveillance and VAE surveillance community associated respiratory infection uh, pathogens which have very long incubation period are very rare uh, causes uh, of infection inside the hospital and if it happens, most likely they are coming from the community. So possible VAP criteria, one of three criteria. The criteria one is positive culture meeting a specific, specific quantitative or semi-quantitative threshold. If you don't have this, you should have virulent respiratory secretion and a positive culture not meeting the criteria one, which is not meeting quantitative or semi-quantitative threshold. Criteria three is positive pleural uh, fluid culture, positive lung histopathology, positive diagnostic test for Legionella or selected respiratory virus. So the criteria three is a rare uh, uh, lab finding for the lung that, uh, that are considered pathognomonic for lower respiratory infection or pneumonia. So the criteria uh, meeting uh, the possible VAB are summarized in this, uh, uh, in this uh, slide, and you can go through and read uh, the, rest of, uh, the rest of the information. So we said in criteria one, you have positive culture of one of the following meeting the threshold. The threshold here would be different according to the type of specimen. The specimen are arranged here from upper respiratory to lower respiratory. So what, uh, as you see the upper respiratory, you give them a higher number. The lower respiratory, you allow for lower number. In the tracheal spread, the threshold is 100,000 CFU per mil, bronchoalveolar lavage, 10,000, lung tissue, 10,000, protected specimen blush is 1,000 only. So we accept the threshold in this way, or if there is other signs that meet this threshold. For example, if they say uh, four plus means 100,000, it's fine. So we accept the four plus. Uh, additionally, they recently added the word moderate or heavy. So moderate or heavy, we will consider it as meeting the threshold, uh, the, the threshold number as you see in this slide. For criteria two, since it's not meeting the threshold that we said either quantitative by numbers, uh, 10,000, uh, 100,000 or 1,000, as we say, uh, according to the type of specimen or pluses or heavy or moderate. So it's not meeting this. Uh, they said there is organism, but they don't give you a threshold or give you a threshold lower than the threshold, uh, give you a number less, less than the threshold. In this case, you need additionally virulent respiratory uh, secretions plus one of these organisms. And uh, look at here, they allow in second criteria sputum. So of organism detected in the sputum plus virulent respiratory secretion are allowed for second criteria for possible VAB. And the organism may be identified through yes or no. So for example, Klebsiella, but they do not, not give you any amount of, uh, uh, of culture or a quantitative, semi-quantitative culture, but it's not meeting the threshold. So a question here, is this well culture report acceptable? It said normal flora with many pseudomonas and moderate candida. So remember that the word many or heavy is equivalent to semi-quantitative culture of criteria one. So since pseudomonas is said many, so it's meeting criteria one. And uh, moderate candida species uh, are not meeting this criteria. Uh, and when you have one meeting and one not meeting, uh, still the one meeting is enough to meet uh, the criteria for possible VAT. 
So can I use a positive culture during the window even if it was previously reported? The answer is yes. Why? Because uh, uh, it doesn't matter if the patient had the same organism before the window or not. As long as the uh, pathogen is detected during the window and it's eligible pathogen and uh, happen in the window, you should use it uh, towards the criteria of possible VAP. When we say virulent respiratory secretion, it is defined as secretion from the lung, bronchi, or trachea that contain more than 25 neutrophils and less than 10 squamous cell epithelial cells bear lower power field using the uh, uh, microscope. So it means more neutrophil, less squamous cell. This is virulence. So the virulence secretion criterion must be met using the specific a quantitative or semi-quantitative threshold for neutrophil uh, and squamous cells. So as you see, they can use few moderate heavy pluses. All these are acceptable as long as it meet the criteria that we define in the first sentence, more than 25 neutrophil and less than uh, 10 squamous cells. The third criteria for possible VAB, it is one of the following. Organism identified from pleural fluid, you know, pleural fluid should be inert fluid. So having the organism from the pleural fluid uh, is, is okay. Uh, during thoracosynthesis or within 24 hours of schistic tube placement. Uh, lung histopathology uh, showing signs of uh, pneumonia, abscess information and evidence of lung parenchyma invasion. Evidence of infection with viral pathogen listed blue based on result of immunohistochemical assays, cytology or microscopy performed on lung tissue. Diagnostic test for Legionella, diagnostic test of respiratory uh, secretion for a specific viruses including influenza virus, respiratory syncytial virus, adenovirus, parainfluenza, rhinovirus, hum human uh, metanumovirus and coronavirus. Uh, so these are rare criteria for detecting uh, uh, pneumonia, but uh, most likely pathognomonic for the de detecting pneumonia. So this patient, uh, as you see, uh, meeting the criteria for VAC and IVAC, and we want uh, VAC or IVAC. Uh, it's, uh, the, the window is five days, and uh, the, the day five of mechanical ventilation is actually the date of event. Uh, now we were looking for the criteria uh, for possible VAP. So the question is, which criteria is applicable here? You have endotracheal aspirate with virulent uh, uh, secretions, as you see, more than 25 neutrophil and less than 10 squamous, and the organism is staph. Since the staph is mentioned without a threshold, it's yes or no, and virulent secretion, so it's meeting criteria too. Uh, in this example, you have endotracheal aspirate and staph uh, present to, uh, uh, to the threshold, which is uh, the threshold for endotracheal aspirate, which is 100,000. So in this case, it's meeting the threshold criteria one. The last example here, you have pleural fluid and candida albicans is uh, uh, collected. We said if candida or uh, coagulase negative and tyrococi are detected from the pleural fluid or the lung, uh, they are acceptable organism uh, and these are considered for uh, criteria three. Uh, for VA reporting, we have a hierarchy here. So if you have the lower uh, and higher definition met, you use the higher definition. So if VAC is met, you report VAC. If VAC and IVAC is met, you report uh, IVAC. If uh, all are met, you report only possible VAC because it is the highest. And remember that we cannot change VAC to IVAC or IVAC to possible VAC 
possible based on a data that have been collected outside the window all the data that me that allow you to meet one of the three layers of VAE has to happen within uh, the window so for this patient uh, uh, it has the criteria for VAC IVAC and uh, they meet the definition for possible VAB uh, criteria to endotracheal aspirate staph plus purulent secretion but this was met during uh, outside the window the during the window there was no uh, microbiologic evidence uh, for pneumonia so this will not be upgraded to possible VAB and IVAC is only recorded because it is uh, what what was present during the window so IVAC cannot be upgraded to possible VAB as the positive microbiology occur outside the VAE window. As we said, excluding excluded organism uh, that cannot be used to meet possible VAB are non-specific uh, definitions like normal flora, normal oral flora, mixed flora, mixed oral flora, respiratory flora, and so on. Candida species or yeast not otherwise specified coagulase negative staph in enterococci unless they are from the lung or pleura. Why, uh, why this exception? Uh, because lung and pleura supposed to be very uh, clean tissue. Having one of these organisms uh, does not mean it is contaminated. It means a real infection. As we said before, also the excreted organism include community associated respiratory infections, which are caused by uh, which are not known cause for HAI, and if detected in the hospital, it's, it's very rarely detected in the hospital. And if it's detected, and if it's detected in the hospital, usually it is caught from the community because it has a long incubation period. Are we doing post-discharge uh, surveillance for VAE? Uh, it's not required to monitor VAE after discharge from uh, the unit of surveillance uh, or the hospital. However, VAE discovered within two calendar days of discharge, uh, where the day of discharge is day one, should be reported. No additional ventilator days are reported. So basically, we don't do post-discharge surveillance after any device associated, but if we get informed about the events, we should include it without any additional denominator outside the unit. So this is a VAE example. You have patient who has been uh, on ventilator from January 1 to January 9, and you have beep reading and FIO2 reading, and this reading are the minimum uh, maintained for at least one hour uh, and as you see they have uh, two days of stability it's 40 40 uh, and 5 5 uh, beep 5 5 and uh, and if i 2 40 40 then in the next two days january 5 and 6 they have the beep increased by three centimeters and maintain they have the FIO2 increase by 20 but not maintained. So it is meeting the definition using the BEEP criteria and the VAC would be the first day of worsening uh, which is January 5. And at this point you can diagnose VAC. Uh, VAA window would be determined by the date, uh, the first day of uh, worsening which is the date of event two days before and two days after. And the window is five days because it's outside the first two days of vin on ventilator. During that four, five days, which extends from, uh, extend from January 3 to January 7, you can look at the temperature on white blood cells. And obviously the temperature is increased above uh, the, the 100 uh, here and uh, the also the um white blood cell increased above 12 we ha you have you see here 14 and 15 so you're meeting that part uh, coming to the antimicrobial start you have linozylid and cefibim uh, uh, started during the, the five days window so you can use or uh, use them and this patient has cefibim 
used within the window for four days and two two days after the window so you continue here uh, six uh, qualified calendar days uh, antimicrobial uh, qualified days so you can meet the ivac criteria and again the date of ivac is still the same as the date of vac no change of the date of event Additionally, during the window, you have uh, some signs of uh, virulence and one organism. So you're meeting criteria two for possible verb, and now you can diagnose possible verb. And, and again, uh, the, the date of event will still the same. So it is January 5 for VAC, IVAC, and possible verb. Since you have the three uh, definitions met here, you only report possible verb. You don't report VAC or IVAC. VAE data. So this is the form that we collect information about VAE. Um, it is very similar to uh, VAB, but uh, we ask uh, questions related to the event. Uh, we ask questions related to the event, uh, including the VAE diagnosis and the criteria used. Uh, the 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 layer vac ivac possible uh, ventilator uh, possible vab and the criteria used as well uh, this uh, form is very nice for daily listing of the information of uh, 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 that you can diagnose vac ivac and possible vab because it includes uh, the 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 date the calendar date the date of uh, mechanical ventilation uh, minimum minimum daily uh, reading for B and FiO2 temperature and white blood cells and antimicrobial use to meet the IVAC criteria, as well as virulence uh, organism and threshold uh, to meet the possible VAP criteria. And, uh, and so th so this uh, form is very nice to use before filling the VAE uh, form. The denominator form here uh, we have we have the number of patients, the number of patients on ventilator, and also the number of episodes. For the number of episodes, um, every patient at the beginning of the month will be considered episode. So we will add only when a new episode is uh, is added after the first day of the month, uh, and and this uh, either new admission. Uh, a new intubation for the patient or a second or third intubation for example that are separated by one more than one or more calendar day without uh, intubation uh, so the number of episodes it represented the sum of number of episodes of mechanical ventilation that occurred in the location during this month so a single episode of mechanical ventilation for each patient to be counted in the first day of the month and after that any additional insertion uh, intubation new intubation will be added as new episode episode and um, replacement uh, that is separated by one full calendar day is considered a new episode as well. Um, this would include those who are admitted to the location already on mechanical ventilation and those who are newly ventilated uh, 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 and any previously ventilated patient who have new episodes of mechanical ventilation occurring during the same month. For the VA, uh, VAE analysis, uh, for uh, VAE rate, you can uh, you divide the ventilator uh, VAE events uh, over the denominator. The denominator could be ventilator days uh, times 1,000 or episodes of uh, mechanical ventilation times 100. Remember that the denominator episodes of mechanical ventilation is an optional, and in both cases, the uh, VAE rate per bear 1,000 ventilator days or 100 episodes uh, uh, can be stratified by the type of adult ICU. For the ventilator utilization ratio, it is similar to the VAB, so it is ventilator days over patient days. And again, you can do this, stratify this based on the adult ICUs. A VAE 
SIR observed or expected, and the, the observed is the one that you detected during the surveillance expected are the ones that you can calculate from the benchmark. Uh, please look at the lecture for uh, SIR. And uh, uh, above one means you have VAE rate above uh, the benchmark. Uh, equ one means equal, uh, less than one means you have VAE rate less than the benchmark. Uh, you can do this also for a specific uh, uh, infections if you want, like uh, uh, all VAE together overall. Uh, which was reported in 2014 data, and IVAC plus possible VAB, which was also reported in the 2014 uh, report we will show you later. Uh, ventilator SUR, which uh, standardized utilization ratio, observed ventilator days over expected ventilator days. The observed that uh, the denominator that you collect during the um, surveillance they expected you get from the benchmark and this is the way of how you calculate it and remember the interpretation is the same this is the report uh, for the 2014 NHSN data about the VAE uh, rates uh, it showed that the uh, VAE uh, as a total for all units and if you take the medical surgical uh, unit you will see that the bold mean is 7.8 so uh, the nhsn rate is around uh, 7.8 or 8 vae events per 1000 ventilator days and this uh, this is the rate for different units uh, the blue color represent the overall vae and the red color represent the uh, the total minus the VAC, which means IVAC plus uh, possible VAC. Uh, this is the uh, percentage of infection-related VAE, VAC, IVAC, possible VAB to all VAE. So you, you expect that uh, uh, IVAC plus possible VAB represent between 30, uh, around 30 or to 40, uh, percent of all VAE. Thanks a lot.